All right, Steve Holland here again with Rapid Tech. This heat exchanger series, this is a this is the heat exchanger failures and identification course. And remember, as with any Rapid Tech course, all this information is available out on our website. In addition, you can print out the uh, supporting documents and anytime you want to pull up a heat exchanger at a Rapid Tech site, you just type in carrier, it'll pull up every single carrier heat exchanger that we have videoed and you will literally right there in the home or with the homeowner be able to pull this up and show them what you found but before I do that I've got a shout out to all my buddies uh, Ian and Ben up in Twin Cities and Opie over there in St. Cloud and we've got Brad up in Rhinelander Wisconsin and then we've got my buddy Steve hanging out in Hawaii doing air conditioning so I just wanted to shout out uh, to all those guys. I've got a whole bunch. I could spend a whole video shouting out to all my HVAC buddies around the country. But let's go ahead and take a look at this heat exchanger uh, series on the Carrier 58 MVP. It is also the Bryant 355 MAV. So if you know your numbers, that's what you'll find. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right. Here you see it, 58 MVP. Let's watch the video. And uh, oops, back up, Steve. Let's watch the video, and then we'll go report. All right, Rapid Tech students, we got a Carrier 58 MVP. This furnace was also manufactured under a Bryant model number of a 355. So, same heat exchanger, everything's the same, identical. Um, this one's tricky, so I'm going to call this one uh, minor. This is a minor, and this one can stump you if you're not careful. Um, I did not find this problem on this furnace until I actually pulled the blower motor out. Now, if you look, I pulled the entire back of it off. So I had I had the entire back of the heat exchanger, a furnace apart, and I checked everything from in here with the infrared inspection system. I checked all the washboards, okay? Couldn't find anything, and so I said, I'm gonna pull the blower. And when I pulled the blower, is when I discovered a very minor problem, and it's it's part of their uh, it's a service bulletin on it. So if you run into these, there is a service bulletin. Carrier stood behind it; they'll take care of you. No big deal. Um, but here's the deal: um, customers that are not having their systems inspected regularly, uh, this one will get passed up. And also, when you guys go down a service call, on a no heat call or or maintenance, you have to check this. Now, on a no heat call, you know, let's say you change the igniter, and you walk away, you just left behind a problem for that customer. And let me show you what I discovered. Uh, just bear with me, i got to move my camera system around a little bit here. It's always tricky to do all this by yourself. I'm on a low budget, so I can't uh, hire folks to, to do it. But I want to show you what I discovered. And by the way, I know this furnace like the back of my hands. I personally installed hundreds, if not thousands of these. What do you notice right there? Picking up some light from our ceiling. But let me see all the corrosion. That's the polypropylene coating inside that heat exchanger that's breaking down. So here's the deal. Okay. Carrier will give you a new heat exchanger. In most cases, there are some, you have to read the bulletin because it's not guaranteed. You know, there's some homeowner requirements. You don't have to be the original homeowner. And there's some other issues. So you just have to check it and realize that there's a 40 inch model and a 47 and it's different bulletins. Um, and I believe the 47 inch bulletin may have expired, but again, I'm not the carrier guy, so check with your distributor or your carrier people, but here's what I will tell you. If you see that, and this is minor, that's why I'm calling this one the minor, I'll show you some major, major issues. Um, so what do you want to check on this one? Well, first off, um, when you see this furnace, one of the things that you want to check um, is you always want to check that's secondary. So you want to check the secondary like we talked about here. You look for that, again, look for that that corrosion. You can see it real good right there. Polypropylene's breaking up. The other thing is these will plug up. So if you pull your inducer assembly, um, I have some, if you search out on Rapid Tech, search carrier plug, there's a video on the plug secondaries and what they look, look like. But, uh, just remember, what you have to do with this particular model is um, check your washboards on your primary. You want to check um, check that secondary, so make sure that, that you check that. 
and then uh, check to see if the secondary is plugged. All right, that's Carrier 58 MVP, also the Bryant 355, and uh, any of those products with that, with that aluminized secondary, always check it for leakage. And this one stumped me. I had to pull the blower to find those little on the bottom because I couldn't see from the top. All right, thanks. Have a great day. All right. So Ian and Ben and Brad and Steve, who have all been through many of my training courses, you guys know what we're looking at, don't you? You've seen this many times. What we've got is we've got a secondary heat exchanger. Um, by the way, I'm going to tell you something about that secondary. That's a polypropylene heat exchanger. That was an aluminized coated heat exchanger built by Carrier. It absolutely had outstanding heat transfer. Great design. I mean, it was... Let me rephrase that. It was a great concept. However, the polypropylene broke down. Why does polypropylene break down, or why do things break down in these heat exchangers? Think about it. When you condense in that secondary heat exchanger, that condensate has an acidic value, so it will eat and corrode metal. Well, if there's any breach or breakdown of that, of that, uh, of that polypropylene, eventually it'll work through the polypropylene and it will eventually penetrate the metal, eat through the metal. Now the polypropylene probably, you know, I don't know, I'm not an engineer for United Technologies or Carrier, but I'm guessing as a 27-year veteran that maybe the expansion and contraction and the vibration from the inducer motor or the vent motor assembly, the vibration from the blower motor, uh, the number of cycles, and then again the expansion and contraction eventually separated that polypropylene. Once that polypropylene separated, the condensate got at the metal, ate the metal, had problems. So possible causes, well, it's pretty simple. We think it was poorly designed. I think they had good intentions with that, with that secondary, but that breakdown of that polypropylene is essentially what, what, what caused that furnace to fail. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other failures. First off, um, when I mentioned that when you have to look at, when you look at this furnace, all right, the things that you want to look for, let me just back up here once. I want to show you something. This is the washboard. See that? And this washboard this heat exchanger is in our possession and we took that out of a Bryant furnace and you can't see it in the picture but where I circled it and that's I did that personally with a sharpie there's a fracture right here in the washboard and you can see the heat stress so we call this the washboard section of the heat exchanger these are the rivets anytime you inspect a Bryant or carrier that'd be the 58 MVP the Bryant 355 MAV the uh, the MXA the 350 the 340 the MCA any of those 40 inch models you want to check these rivets for fractures don't technicians listen to me don't go out and just change a secondary under the program because you're gonna find that you're gonna pull these cells right here okay you take these cells and 60,000 furnace has got three cells you pull those cells out you set them on a the floor you install your new secondary now you install three new cells what if it has a fracture because you didn't look at it or the guy before you didn't look at it so watch these washboards, watch these rivets. Here's my suggestion. Take these cells with you. If you're going to change this heat exchanger, take the cells, and you also have to change the coupler box on the back of the heat exchanger. So the coupler box, so if you look at this, this is the primary, or this is the secondary portion. This is the whole chamber pulled out. So if you look at this, this is the entire chamber. This came from a 60,000. MXO60 and look at how the upper portion and the lower portion and then there would have been a coupler box that fit on here okay and then this is your upper portion and these are the four screws you pull out to mount those cells so if you're gonna go out on a 60,000 to change a secondary take three cells with and make sure you take the updated stainless steel coupler box that goes on the back um, I don't have a coupler box picture on here but you know what I mean if you've changed these. So, you know, these are pictures. Here's one that plugged. Um, here's one that plugged. And uh, here's your primary. And then this is what the corrosion will look like. You know, this is out of Bryant 355 MAV. This is out of a 5 ton blower drive 100,000 BTU. You'll see the little corrosion marks. And that's what you're going to see in that polypropylene breakdown. So, there you have it, guys. That's the Bryant, the pain. By the way, on the pain model, Think I don't know the exact number. I think it was a 490, but again, it doesn't matter. It's that 40-inch tall furnace. Here's a here's an MCA 
uh, carry. You can tell it's 40,000 because look at the burner box, how small it is. And then you can tell this one's 100,000. Look at how wide the burner box is here. And then, and then if you look over here at this one, this is a 60. So anyway, there you have it. That's your Bryant carrier and pain secondary heat exchanger failures. So as with any tech or any of the programs we offer with Rapid Tech, um, if you're a Rapid Tech member, you sign into our Rapid Tech site. You go ahead and take these courses. You finish them. And by the way, Ian, yes, you have to pass. I don't give you a free pass, Ian. Um, you pass your course. You get your heat exchanger certification. If you'd like to learn more, give Scott a call at 866-992-1717. Or you can visit our heat exchanger safety.com website, which has very little or nothing to do with rapid tech, but it's a great resource. So if you're out there working with customers or homeowners and you want to show them a picture, um, we've got a gallery there. We've got stories there. We've got articles, blogs. Um, one of these days I'll put a picture of myself on there, but I don't need the paparazzi chasing me each and every day. So again, thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Use this stuff out on the job. Use it to train other technicians. When you get these young guys coming in or the new guys into the trade, this is a great resource here on YouTube and through a rapid tech program. Get these guys trained. Train them right. Um, and owners that are watching this, train your techs the right way. Give me a call anytime. Talk to Scott. You're welcome to call me. I'll come out and visit with you if I'm in your area. But there's, there's, uh, you know, I'm passionate about this industry, and I believe that we want to change the HVAC industry. And if you look right there, let's change the HVAC industry one technician at a time. Thank you. Have a fantastic day, fantastic evening.